The device you see here is an invention by Leonardo da Vinci, who lived around the same time as Christopher Columbus, and this is his cam. If you're thinking about building one of these, let's take a look and see how you can do it. First of all, I got material that was similar to a mahogany, only a harder piece of wood. I don't know what it was. It was a piece of fencing. And I cut it to five and a quarter inches in width and 24 inches long. I used some of the same material and ripped it into one and three quarter inches wide. And using this material, I was able to make two uprights. These uprights, there's a variable uh, distance that you can make them, but these here are 17 inches tall. I have two 17 inch tall uprights, and then I have 45 degree cuts made on some more of this same material. And you can see it supports the uprights on both sides. I also took and drilled 90 degree holes this way through this material. So then when I put it in place, I could drive screws in that would pull it in tight all the way around. Down here, I took my bandsaw and notched out a place where I could insert this upright and double screw and glue it in to make it really sturdy. Now, up this post, I have holes drilled, three eighths inch holes, and I have one at four and a half inches and one at 11 and a half inches. So here, four and a half, and this is actually 14 and a half, excuse me. So those are three eight inch holes that went through, providing down here the fulcrum for this lever here. And up here, you can see this is the axle point for this mechanism. Now, the hardest part on this was coming up with this cam. How am I going to do that? And there must be an easier way, but what I did is I took a piece of paper and used a compass and I made a circle. After making that circle, I went about halfway through the circle and I started expanding the radius and made it further and further out, creating a circular inclined plane. Then when I drilled the hole, it isn't drilled at the center of this circle, it's offset a bit. And you can see what happens when I begin to turn this, it touches and the inclined plane, the distance gets greater and greater, pushes it further and further and further back until you get to this point where there's a flat and then all of a sudden it's released. And it continues to do that and you can go as fast as you'd like. Now, the other thing down here, this was a little bit difficult to do. So I'm going to get a little closer so you can see this. Um, but that particular area right there, I love turning things on my lathe. So I had a piece of material that's approximately an inch and three quarter by an inch and three quarter. And it looks like about 15 inches long. I took that, put it on my lathe and turned it to make it look really pretty. And then at the end, I made the turning, oh, I think it was a half inch down here at the end. Drilled a half inch hole into this material, which is some type of dense, heavy, exotic wood. And I glued that in there. Now on the other side, I had to figure out how I'm gonna get this offset here. So I don't know if you can see this, I hope you can see it okay. Let's see if I can get this out of the way a bit. You can see I have this vertical piece here and then I glued a second piece here and then finally the third piece where I cut and ground away a sloping edge there. These three are glued together. Down here, see if I can get you a little bit closer. Sorry about the wobble. There we go. You can see that 3 h inch hole is going through there. And then I took my bandsaw and cut notches in here and made this joint, pinched it together with these nuts on each side, and glued it at the same time. So this is a good sturdy joint to do the job. Now, 
because also I like using my lathe. I took a piece of, I, this was scrap given to me, but I believe this is African rosewood. It's beautiful. I turned this and left this flat on this side to drill my 3 8 inch hole. And then I also over here uh, turned a wooden knob and you can see I made the hole a little bit big so it would purposely spin and I could grip it with my fingers and hold it tight but it would spin as I turn this around. So this is something you don't have to do but if you are able to and you like turning on a lathe it's a lot of fun. So this is an example of uh, a little device. We already said it was from way back in the 1500s and they didn't learn what to do with this device for several centuries and then believe it or not along comes the steam engine where you can get this thing rotating at a terrific speed and this hammer coming down at a terrific speed up to 20 times a second this hammer could hit not this wooden hammer but a steel one with a huge steel arm and it was used to pound sheets of metal flatter and flatter and flatter. Uh, that was replaced later when they came out with a huge, huge mechanical rolling arms that could do that. But this was used for a long time for that purpose. What would I do with this? Other than being an interesting demonstration, I would go into a classroom, I like to do that, and show it to students and say, okay, you have this device it can be used manually like this. You could have someone turning it, but you could use wind or you could use water to turn this continuously. What could you do on this end if you had something that maybe had a terrific weight slamming down? What could you do with that? Could you grind grain? Could you pulverize chemicals, granite, materials for other uses? What could you do with this? What could it be used for? So there you go. I hope you might want to try this. Uh, you'll have a lot of fun and you'll end up with something that if nothing else, it's a conversation starter. Conversation might be, don't you have anything better to do with your time? <laughs> okay, take care.